Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. This is on I'm going to call the meeting to order. Okay, uh, I have the honors today, so if everyone just bow your heads, please. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that you guide and direct us throughout this meeting and throughout our lives. We need more harmony, we need more work together, and we need more just representing the citizens of Alamance County. We pray that you guide us throughout this meeting in our lives. Amen. 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 We have the Pledge of Allegiance, if you would stand. There we go. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next is the approval of the agenda, and we have two modifications that we need to make. Uh, the first is, and Miss York, it's the, um, what item number is that? Item 6B, sir. Item 6B, which is the uh, event center feasibility of uh, the presenter, in that case, had a death in the family, and we're going to simply remove that and add it back to our next February meeting. And Mr. Turner, I think you had a motion. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I, I uh, move that we add to item 6D, uh, an agenda item, the consideration of a response to ABSS's RIF proposal. If that's a motion, I'll second in that motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, we now have a 6D. <coughs> motion to approve the agenda. We have a motion to approve the agenda. Do we have a second? As amended. Second. I have a motion to amend as amended. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Motion to approve the consent agenda. We're not there yet. Mm -hmm. We have oh, public speakers. Uh, Sammy, he was trying to delete you, but uh, sorry. <laughs> okay, Sammy Moser. Good morning, everyone. Good, good morning, morning, commissioners. Uh, Chairman Posey, good morning, other commissioners. I'm Sammy Moser. Uh, I want to speak on the uh, ongoing issue with uh, spending for ABSS or school children. I'd just like to say that I'm sure everyone here, we love our school children and we love our teachers for what they do. And uh, we want the best for our schools. I don't like the idea that we keep hearing our, our, the propaganda against our, what I call propaganda against our county commissioners. I've went back and looked at uh, news articles that I've kept through several years and just want to point out a few articles, information that was reported in the paper. Some of the commissioners might want to put your head down, not even listen to me speak. I don't know, but let's be professional. Let's just look at past issues so we can make sure going forward we get this thing correct about our schools and our school students and our teachers. Uh, a bond issue was passed in 2004. That was 36.6 million in 2004. News article I have in 2012, four million was unspent from the bond that was passed in 2004. Four million was left unspent. 
part of this $4 million, $2.5 million added to $3.5 million of lottery funds was going to be spent this particular year to improve our schools. Out of that $3.5 million spent, although we keep hearing we didn't have money to repair roofs, out of the $5.5 million spent, according to the news article, only 200000 was spent on roof repair. Only 200000 on roof repair in 2012. In the article about the year 2015, $1.5 million was spent on repair. That particular year, only 200000 was spent on roof repair. The other money was spent on painting, flooring, new floors and gymnasiums. Even four of our schools, we did extra uh, design work on the gym floors. But only 200000 out of that $1.5 million was spent on roof repair. And I'm just thinking, have we prioritized the money correctly? If not, we want the money for our school kids. We want the money for our teachers. But we want to make sure the money, when it comes in, is used adequately. And in th 2018, seven million dollars was appropriated to Kearns Construction for Western High School. Yes, Part yes. of that money was to go for roof repair. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Understand. In April of last year, we were asked for two and a half, two hundred fifty thousand for new redesign of roof repair at Western High School. Thank you for the time, oh, and we want to every, work for our kids, to, our students. I'm sorry, I apologize. Everyone's limited to three minutes. I should have stated that before the first speaker. Uh, but Sammy's been around. He knows better. <laughs> uh, and, and a good friend of mine. Uh, I apologize. But each speaker is timed. Time is shown. Three minutes total. And the total speakers have a uh, total of 30 minutes. I don't think that's going to be an issue today at all. Mr. Moser, thank you. I apologize. Um, okay, Henry Vines. Henry's been here before as well. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Paisley and, and commissioners to allow me to speak this today. My name is Henry Vines. Uh, I live in Snow Camp right down here down south. Today I'd like to speak to you about all the issues that's going on. And um, I think that the news article that came out in the Alamance News has really spurred attention to the taxpayers of this county. When we were talking about six and a half percent, six and a half cent increase in property taxes and estimated maybe up to as much as 10. Well, my number is much higher than that. I think we're looking at 15 cents. When we are looking at about $120 million debt that we are fixing to incur, it will be reported here soon about how much it's going to cost to fix the roofs and the HVACs. We got a $26 million mold problem. We got a 16, right at $16 million. Looks like we're headed into uh, over budget for this physical year. Add it all together, folks. That's $120 million. Now, my other thing is, you know, is that we seem to be getting comfortable with raising the property taxes. Five years ago, the commissioner sat right here in these chairs, and the bond was passed. Sales tax failed. So we sat up here and we said, we ain't got no choice but to raise taxes by eight cents on property taxes because we got to fund this bond. Well, the people of this county voted against it but because they didn't want to raise their taxes, but in essence, they voted for a tax increase just in a different place. A tax increase is a tax increase. It makes no difference where it's at. The only difference between the two is that that sales tax is shared among all the county residents and the people that come in and visit us. It was mentioned in the forum that Bucky's wasn't going to be nothing but a gas station. That's not true. They are 
banking on making their profits off of what they sell inside their store. They're looking at a million people visiting that station. They're talking about over $14 million, possibly even more, coming in on revenues, on retail sales, not gas. So, commissioners, now's the time we need to do something if we want to act on this because the General Assembly is going to um, act real soon on this. You have the ability to send a letter to the, the delegation and ask that impose this core cent sales tax on Alamance County. They can put this on a bill and it will pass through. No one has rejected uh, a core cent sales tax in the General Assembly. My time's out. I appreciate <laughs> it, but I hope y'all consider this. Thanks, sir. By the way, we commissioners are listening to every speaker but we will not comment until the end of the meeting where it's county commissioner comments. So if you expect us to comment now, procedurally cannot happen. But we are listening, and even though we don't comment now, we likely are or will at the end of the meeting. Okay. Um, I need my glasses for this thing here. Motion to approve the consent. Oh. Uh, Zane Cooper. <laughs> I'm ready to be done. <laughs> Mr. Carter, that's too strong. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I came in this morning in response to uh, the stories that came out for ABSS over the weekend and on Friday. Um, it seems that you guys have added something to the agenda uh, to respond to all of that, so I appreciate it. I'm interested to, to hear that response. Um, so I'll keep this short. I won't go into a whole lot of detail as, as to what my thoughts are. Um, I've been a resident here since uh, 1991. Uh, there was a brief time away in Knoxville, but now I'm here. I live in Burlington. Uh, I work for the city. Uh, my son is a five-year-old kindergarten student in the SPLASH program at, at Smith. Um, and in the short time that he's been in public schools, I can attest to that program, uh, the effectiveness of it, and uh, just we love it. My wife and I, he loves it. Um, so I came here to urge uh, the commissioners and everything to consider helping ABSS through, through a tough time. Um, I think we tend to put a little bit too much importance on who's at fault um, and not really focusing on the issue at hand and how we're going to fix it. Um, you know, they're, they're speaking of losing certain programs that are really beneficial to the county, uh, to the students, to the growth of the county, all of that. Um, so I urge you just to consider uh, in a time of need helping keep these programs. Uh, they're very important to me, um, but also, you know, throughout the county and any splash programs, art programs, these teachers, uh, they need support. Um, their job is very, very important. I would argue that it's much more important than mine. Um, but I appreciate your time. I thank you. I'm not going to take the three minutes. Uh, I'm interested to hear what the response is, so thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Engel, I, t I told Mr. Engel early on as he was signing up, he's disqualified from speaking. He's left-handed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he told me that, and, and I saw a, a picture that just – all inspired me just before I came up here. It was Sheriff Terry Johnson with a full head of hair back when he was in high school. I said, man, that looks great, Sheriff. He's got it there. <laughs> he's, got, he's got it there. But uh, listen, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, Chairman Paisley and uh, Mr. Vice Chair Carter. Thank, thank you, commissioners, for allowing me to speak. I'm not here to ask for anything. I'm here as a, uh, just to try to be a peaceful person that sit and reach out to the olive branch and to tell you this, if I've done anything uh, to upset any of you, I apologize, and uh, I want to move on in a positive way with a great working relationship. Uh, I know every one of you, I respect every one of you, and it, it, we just need to get together and work these things out in a positive way, sit across the table. We might even want to just write down, these are our concerns, and then talk them out and work them out. So that's where I'm at. Uh, Ms. Thompson and I, back in about 2008, I think she was the chair of the uh, Board of Education. Was it 15? Okay, I, listen, I'm getting old. I apologize. <laughs> but And I was the uh, chair here. 
And we decided, you know, we need to, we need, things have always been contentious uh, around budget time between the commissioners and the school board. That's, that's been, a, that's been forever. You, all of you know that. So we, we said, well, maybe we can help this situation by having a liaison to come to our meetings. And so Mr. Lashley, you, you and Mr. Turner were the last to serve. Ms. Thompson's there now. We appreciate that. It's continued on since 2015. I think it's a positive thing. We need to continue to do it. I encourage us to continue to do it. But I just want to be here to say, look, if there's anything that I can do to sit down so we can work that out, the general public's out here. They're mad at both of us right now, both sides. Well, let's fix that, folks. Let's do it. And I, I, I'm just reaching out and say, I'll do anything I can to help fix it. And uh, uh, and I'm here today, and I'm saying I'm the old man. I may not be service-wise, but I'm the old man on the uh, school board. The other thing, this man right here brought up a very valid point. Uh, you know, when, when we passed the, the two bonds uh, back in, I think it was 2018, maybe 2018, and, and the quarter cent sales tax fell short. But it came the closest that it, it has ever come to passing, just imagine, I think, uh, Heidi, if I'm wrong, about nine million that the quarter cent would bring in now, eight or nine million. You're looking at maybe uh, 12 to 14 million the time you get Bucky's and these other businesses uh, uh, up and running. And here's the rest of the story. The majority of that money, as Henry said, is gonna be coming from outside the county. People just riding through is gonna help us pay for law enforcement, education, uh, other public services, uh, you know, let's all get our heads together and say, you know what, let's get everybody on board and let's get this thing passed. And uh, this may be the perfect time because the general public sees what we're going through from a financial standpoint. So that is all I have to say. I want to thank every one of you for what you're doing. I know it's a tough job because I've sit there and, and, and that seed and that seed, but thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Mr. Carter, do you sure. have a motion? <laughs> Motion to approve uh, the consent agenda. Have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Okay, um, Mr. Baker. Next item is roofing and HVAC studies and the interim <coughs> report. Thank you. Good, good morning, commissioners. Uh, Before you start, are you wearing body armor today? I mean, <laughs> don't need it. Mm. Don't need okay. it. <laughs> mm. um, I'm here just to give a, an update on the status of our assessment that we're doing uh, of the roofs and HVAC systems, both at the school system buildings and all of the county buildings. So for those of folks in the audience who haven't been talking about this every day, I've put a timeline up on the uh, screen just to show the process here. We started this in October and uh, did an RFQ. We selected uh, some folks to help us do this who were experts in the field. The two folks that we chose um, are Ron McCaskill from uh, REI and uh, Kevin Waters from uh, SCI, System Contractors. So Ron is here in the audience and I'm gonna let him speak in a minute. Kevin has hit some travel delays. He may run in here late uh, and sweaty in just a minute. We'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, we, we asked these guys to have a top 20 ranking for us um, by this meeting so that you guys would have this knowledge as we move into budget season. So over the course of the next five months they are going to continue to assess all the buildings they're going to look at all the roofs all the hvacs and they're going to come up with a uh, integrated list of those projects let us know the status of all of them which of them needs to be fixed and in the order they need to be fixed um, and importantly um, a dollar figure estimate for all of that work that dollar figure because if you're talking about every roof every hvac the dollar figure is huge Obviously, we don't need to do all that right now. We're not trying to do all that right now. It's just giving us an idea of what these things cost and what our top priorities need to be. Um, so that will, work will be done on June 30th, and we'll come back um, and make that final presentation. Uh, but this will help us get it started um, as the budget season is kicking off. So this is the top 22 roof. Uh, Ron gave us a little extra for our money and did 22 roofs. Um, and this shows the, the situation in, in ranked order. Um, 
Ron, you want to come up and talk a little bit about your process and uh, and the results? Absolutely. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you. I'm Ron McCaskill for REI Engineers. I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak with you today. Uh, as Brian mentioned, um, uh, we were uh, selected to assist Alamance County and Alamance County Schools to look at all the roofs. Um, and we were trying to get the top 20 roofs, and we kind of went from information that we received both from the county and the school system on what they have the most work orders for or what they know that's in the worst condition. So we kind of concentrated on those school systems first. As far as the um, schools in the green, those were schools that um, were fully funded and approved up to those amounts um, in design and through construction administration. So they have been funded yes, already? Yes, sir. Yes, Thank sir. You. They've already been funded. Um, we just had the bid opening for Graham High School last week, and it came within budget. Thank goodness. And um, so... Um, and let me interrupt you there yes, again. Uh, in fact, for Southern High School and for uh, Graham High, over $5 million has been appropriated since 2022 to the school system. That's, I believe that's correct. Yes, sir. I know it is. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. So um, the number five through eight have been budgeted through design uh, to do an assessment on those roofs. And if uh, the certain roof sectors on those roofs were bad or in condition that need to be replaced, we uh, did a design in the process of uh, finishing the design. Uh, B. Everett Jordan and Western Alamance Middle School are at um, Department of Public Inst Instruction to be approved, our designs, and then we'll come back, um, or I think uh, Mr. Hook with Alamance Burlington School Systems has the proposals for the, um, the construction administration fees for the engineering and also the budget for the construction. And those are the numbers, uh, including all those with that. Um, so where it says already funded, those are the design fees that's already been funded, and the brown should be the total cost. So, um, yes, sir. So for B. Jordan, if mm -hmm. 52500 has been funded, does that mean deduct that amount from the 1.2, or is the 1.2 a total amount that still needs to be funded? I think we would deduct that from the 1.2. Um, and then we ranked the other schools and Alamance buildings uh, per the actual assessments and um, ranked them being the worst that need to be uh, attention to immediately um, on down the line to number 22. Um, as you can see, number 9, 10, 11, and 12 um, are in very, very bad shape. Uh, they have water intrusion issues. They have constant leaks every time it rains. Um, there's been numerous repairs on those roofs. So they have so many Band-Aids, there's no other option except to get them replaced um, or keep putting Band-Aids on, which is a, uh, money, a lot of money that could be spent elsewhere. Um, then number... 13 through 22 is kind of what we came up with the estimate ranked of what it would take to replace the most worst roof conditions that they have um, on there. It's not, might not be the whole building, but it might be different roof sectors that are bad in need of replacement or repair. Question. Yes, sir. All of the roofs, except if I'm not mistaken, Walter Williams are all flat roofs. Am I correct? I'm sorry? All the roofs with the exception of Walter Williams High School or flat roof? No, that's um, uh, Altima Hall. Ossipi is a metal roof also. And Garrett Hoffield's Elementary Middle School are, is a metal Which roof one? also. Um, number 18 is a metal roof. Number 21 and 22 okay. are, are all metal roofs. That's the reason those repairs are so inexpensive. Okay. Yes, I mean, the, the metal roofs will last a lot longer, of course. So it'll last about 40, 50 years, but um, the sealants 
um, that were put on 25, 26 years ago are gone. That's why you're having water infiltration in those schools now. All that needs to be um, repaired and now, replaced. In our the, oversight committee meeting uh, this past, what, a, last Thursday, a week ago Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Hooks, or uh, Mr. Hooks, operations uh, director, mm -hmm. said that Williams High was a metal roof and should never be repaired but does need caulking, is that correct? That's sealant, yes, or caulking and sealant needs to right. be. And uh, I, we had uh, the Garrett and Hawfields Middle School, Elementary School, hiring that because those sealants are totally failed, uh, numerous repairs on it, all the gutters are rusting out, has holes in it, so that's um, gutter repair, sealant repair, and wall building enclosure sealant replacement also because you have water infiltration in your walls also. Okay, the other part of my question. Yes, sir. How many of those roofs have HVAC systems and coolers and chillers or chillers and whatnot on the roofs? Um, out of the 22? Maybe, maybe easier to say how many of them don't. <laughs> Three. <laughs> so would it not be prudent to... I know we're getting an estimate on the HVAC change out too. Mm -hmm. Would it not be prudent to remove those items from the roof before we do the repair? We are doing that on some of the buildings, uh, Graham High School, Su Graham High School, Southern Alamance High School, um, and we're going to be looking at Western Alamance High School and Eastern Alamance High School on some sectors, taking the units off the roof and right. putting metal roof on there. So there's like two different systems going on those roofs. Um, so we are we are doing that. It costs a little bit more to do that, of course. Um, but if they're you know 35, 40 year old units, you're going to have to replace them anyway. Exactly. If you put them on the ground, you're going to be better off. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think every time somebody's walking on a roof, we got a problem with the leak. They drop screws while they're doing the HVAC service. Absolutely, they'll. they'll could puncture the membrane. Thank um, you. Can I just ask you a question? Garrett Elementary and Hawfields Middle is one of the newer schools as compared to Williams or Sylvan or that. Is that a faulty equipment thing, what you're talking about? Or is, is that worn out? Or is that no, a no, no, it's not, it's not worn out. When you put a, um, uh, you have a metal roof, you have mm -hmm. caulk or sealant oh. that is put on there to terminate edges gotcha. to where there's no water infiltration. After so many years, that caulking and sealing deteriorates with the sun, the wa water elements, the heat, expansion, contraction, those sealants fail after so many years and they have not been replaced since it was uh, built 25, gotcha. six, it seven years ago. It looks new to me compared to some it, of our it, it looks new, but yeah. if you look closely, um, the sealants need to be replaced and the gutters need to be replaced. Okay. Uh, we, we saw some newer schools with some newer metal roofs that were questionable. Um, might not have water infiltration, but there's issues out there already. Um, you smell a rat. <laughs> sort of. A cute one, but you still smell a rat. It could possibly be uh, in the future. We can we gotcha. see some issues with it and... Well, it's like your teeth. Sometimes your old feelings, you have to get new ones. Sure. So, but they're not millions of dollars. That's correct. So I got you. Yes, ma'am. Anything else? Yeah. It, it's important to me to have some kind of idea of stratification of, of need. And it seems like we've got, we've got four that are funded. We've got four more that are in the process. Mm -hmm. and, and you stated that 9 through 12 have, have water infiltration now. It's probably more than 9 through 12. It's pretty much um, all of them. I mean, this, uh, so all of them have water infiltration? All of them have water infiltration at some, somewhere, yes, sir. Okay. Um, the, what does that mean in terms of, of, I mean, of your recommendation on when fixes need to be made? Mm -hmm. I mean, are you saying we need to fix 22 roofs right now? Are you saying? I mean, what, what is your recommendation based upon my recommendation? My, my recommendation is they need to be budgeted to be re replaced or repaired as soon as you possibly could. Okay. Within twelve to twenty-four months. Uh, like if, if this was your, if this was, if you had one building to fix, mm -hmm. uh, because you only were responsible for one building, and you mm -hmm. had 
what you see in these buildings in that building. When would you fix that building? Immediately. Okay. You don't want water in your building. Okay. You get water in your building, you get uh, saturation of your insulation, mm -hmm. it deteriorates your deck. So the longer you wait to do that and you have those conditions, the more money it's going to cost you because you might have um, other damage, um, deck damage, that you're going to have to replace the deck and everything. You have to catch these things before they start leaking or when they get to the life expectancy of the roof system. Okay. And a lot of these roofs, um, I, I listened to the gentleman about when the bonds were passed and some of the roofs were done. Right. They were roofed over. Um, so what's that, what that means is you have the original roof on there and the next roof they put just on top of that. And it doesn't last as long as it should. Um, they say you get 20 years out of that, but... Um, they last maybe 15 to 17 years, which most of those roofs are at this time. And there's water within just about every one of those systems. Okay. Um, you stopped at 22, but there are other roofs to look at. Yes, sir. Why did you stop at 22? Because that's all we had time to before um, we could okay. present to you this for this budget. Do, do you have any, um, any idea about what 23 might? I mean, do you have a concern that roof number 23 has has leaks in the building? Possibly. We haven't been on it to, to see okay. that. Um, um, we were doing everything we could to be able to right. and I appreciate you guys working get, hard on, this get on, yeah. on these 22. Yeah. They're like, you know, five or six football fields, some, some of them, and it's not just walking around the perimeter. I mean, you have to crisscross and walk back and forth on all these roofs to identify what the deficiencies are in those roofs and, and note those. Um, is the HVAC guy here yet? Did you, what's your name, I'm sorry? Ron. Ron, did you, you work with the HVAC folks in some meetings, so you have some knowledge about what the HVAC needs are? Is that fair? Um, I know that some of them have to be removed off the roof so we can put the metal roofs, make the flat roofs into metal roofs. My concern is understanding an integrated plan with roofs and HVACs. Mm -hmm. And can we go to the next HVAC? Uh, slide. Yeah. While you're doing that, can I ask you something like our high schools or whatever that have A, B, C, D, you know, the multiple glorious <laughs> buildings. Are you seeing if all their roofs are a hot mess or is like C better, doesn't need to be touched? Are they all tearing the same amount of time or is it just random buildings? The high schools, I think Graham and Southern were almost yeah. everything except the new additions that okay. you did at, at Southern. Um, Western and Eastern are select roofs that you're having the most issues with. And some of them we were asked to assess uh, to see if it needed to be included into the design. We did assess those roofs and they're gone and need to be in the design that we're going to be doing and for replacement. Okay, thank you. But both these high schools have been fully funded since 2022. Um, that is Southern and Graham. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Hook, operations manager uh, for the school system, said at our oversight meeting again that Williams High School does not need a roof at all. It just needed uh, caulking or sealant or things of that, and it was not an emergency. That's correct. And he said that no of the roofs, none of the roofs uh, for city or county were emergencies and did not have to be done right now. So uh, the report you're giving us is a little different than I think what he was our referring to the waterproofing project at Williams High. Yeah. The Williams High School waterproofing is a totally different thing that Mr. Hook is talking about, mm -hmm. or maybe talking about is what you're referring to. Yeah. Um, we did an investigation out there on the below grade waterproofing because some of it is below grade, and we gave them a proposal for a proper fix on what that's going to take. And that was different than the roof. Board, let me make a suggestion. Since our HVAC uh, individual is not here yet, why don't we just pause this portion until he arrives and then and go ahead to a second item and come back to this item so we can have our expert here. Uh, Mr. Baker, Kevin just texted me that he's walking into the building. Sweet. All right. So Excellent. So he will be. Because uh, Williams is the ground going in. 
because I was at the meeting and I saw the real pretty white caulking on the stairs. That's real, that's hot right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just curious, That's it's not coming from up to down, it's down in. Most, most yeah. of it is coming from the ground level, um, the below grade waterproofing after so many years deteriorates and... Yeah, um, I know when I was on the board, I had somebody call me come over there in the back parking lot, it's kind of mm -hmm. like a cove in the back, where the coaches' offices were on the lower level. Water had run underneath there, and they had to close those offices because it would literally burn your eyes with mold or whatever was in there, and they had to get that repaired. Um, Broadview, the center island, was sunk, and the water or a small anaconda could go in between the wall and the cement. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of, and you get to walk by and see that mess. Well, that's all cleaned up now, but age, it happens. Yes. It does. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Great. Um, Kevin's going to walk in at any moment, but I do want to I'll just show you the uh, HVAC needs. And um, there we go. And talk a little bit about what you mentioned, which was why it makes sense for us to do these on an integrated system. There he is. Oh, uh, you're, you're just in time, brother. Come Dude, on we're up. We're all staring at you. <laughs> Come on up. We're Nothing like it the most stressful entrance to a meeting of all time. Sorry. Uh, this is Kevin Waters. He's our uh, HVAC consultant on this project. So Ron just went through and explained um, all of his projects and his process. And I was just going to tell them uh, the value of doing these together and doing these when we have all of these experts in the same room. Um, they're different projects. The HVAC guy and the roof guy understand the other's projects, but not they're not experts in it. So having them on a call every two weeks, which I, I force them to do, um, and having the school system in there is going to help us moving forward to make sure we're doing the projects at the right time. And uh, I think Eastern or Graham is, Graham is, a, is a great example of we're doing the roof. We got funded for the roof. They were not funded for the HVAC, and the HVACs are on the roof. They need to be taken off, they need to be removed, and if you're doing all that, they need to be replaced at the same time, or else you're just gonna waste money going back and doing it. So we're figuring out a way um, to get all those things done in a way that saves money, in a way that's logical, um, and this process has been very helpful for us to find some of those things and work with um, Greg and the school system on getting those things done. Uh, so Kevin, do you just wanna come up and run through your list and tell them about your process? Sure. And Mr. Baker, before that, uh, now this is part of what we, the county commissioners or the county's paying for uh, with REI and the assessments. So the public needs to be aware of that. Mr. Waters? So evaluation, again, I'm Kevin Waters with Systems Contractors. Uh, we're a design build mechanical contractor out of Greensboro. We also do engineering assessments. We've worked with a, a lot of municipalities over the years. We've done a lot of work with City of Greensboro, Moore County Schools, uh, just you know, Guilford County, different things. So we've, we've been involved in, in this type of process before, also performance contracting and those type things. So um, Ryan asked me to, to take a look at, at the top 20 for this. Uh, obviously, we know we have 38 buildings. So a little bit about the process. So what we do is we send a group of technicians into every one of these schools, and then we look at every single piece of equipment. So you, eventually you will get a report that has every single piece of equipment in every school, has the age of that equipment, has the shape of that equipment. You know, how, how is it compared to something that was new? How long will it last? So we're gonna do all of that as, as part of the final process. But to get the top 20, um, we worked with Ron and kind of compared notes and said, okay, we know Graham High School has units on the roof that have to come off. They're going to put a slope roof on that building so nothing can go back on the roof. So we know we've got to get those on the ground. So those four high schools hit the top just because they all have the same issue. We have at least four buildings, four, four, roof sectors. four buildings per school that all have rooftop equipment that have to come off the roof. That's not to say that, that this, from an equipment perspective, we have to look at it two ways. This is the top 20 schools. That's not necessarily saying that school number 20 may not have something that needs to be replaced. Like it may have an old chiller, an old boiler, an old air handling unit. So really, 
we can't just look at it as 20 schools. We really have to look at the systems as a whole and are there pieces of those systems that are going to need to be replaced before others. So as part of this process, going back, we looked at every single piece of equipment in the buildings. That's step one. Step two, as an engineer, I go in and I take a look at the system. What kind of system is there? We have to remember a lot of these schools were not designed to have air conditioning. They are built in you the know, 50s, 60s. We didn't have air conditioning then. Everything was heated. So we had you know, older windows. We had no insulation. So there's a, there's a lot of different things that you know, we've added air conditioning. Every school system's done. All over the state, we've got the same issues. Everybody has the same problems. So once we, once we go through all the equipment, we look at the systems as a whole. So I look at it from perspective of, can it bring in outside air? We have a lot of schools that can't bring in an outside air because the, the code allows you, if that door is operable, then we don't necessarily have to mechanically bring in outside air. We all know that that door is most likely not going to be open when it's 20 degrees outside. It's not going to be open when it's 90 degrees outside. So we're not getting, always getting fresh air. Again, it's, it's all code is the same. It happens in office buildings. It happens in schools. It happens everywhere. So after, after we look at the system as a whole for outside air, we look at can it dehumidify? Because again, a lot of these systems were you know, put in after the fact. We, we had heated buildings. We put in air conditioning. Now, what problems have we caused over the years by adding air conditioning to a building that wasn't designed for air conditioning? Go back to the windows and, and the no insulation. So we have to look at it and say, okay, can the system that is in that building dehumidify? Answer to that, some of them yes, some of them no. So then as a whole, we say, okay, do we just replace equipment like for like, or do we fix all the problems while we're doing it? Do we change that system? Do we bring in outside air? So we make sure that we're mechanically bringing the fresh air into the building, that we're dehumidifying that air as we're bringing it in. So it's, it's more of a, a process than just, okay, we can go replace all this and it wouldn't cost this much, but it's not going to fix all the problems. So we really have to look at it as a holistic approach. Now, there are some things that can be replaced. Chillers, for instance, they're going to be there regardless of, of what the system is. So we'll, we'll go in and re, you know, replace Go down the list, number 10, uh, M. Holt may have a chiller that needs to be replaced that can be a top priority. So what I've told Ryan, in the end, our report's going to be a little different. It's not just going to be the top 20 schools. It's going to be a list of, okay, here are the priorities overall. So if we take all of the schools and we prioritize what needs to be done in each school, you know, you may have some of the things that Graham may move down to number 20, but some of them are going to be number one. We, we know for a fact that We've got to get those units off the roof in order for Ron to do the roof. So that's, that's the reason we kind of prioritize the high schools first. The rest of those were, were prioritized based on my experience looking at the dehumidification piece and the outside air piece, because those, those two things are super important. I, I'm still looking for some kind of integration of the plans, and I know that may be difficult at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but. Imagine that you are responsible for Highland Elementary, which is an only Highland Elementary, and that's the 21st priority on the list. Mm -hmm. When would you act to take care of the HVAC at Highland, at Highland Elementary? Again, it is a little early because what, what we're trying to do is get the last, we have about 10 more schools, I think, to, to fully go through. Um, we work with the, with the uh, school system and say, okay, which, which jobs are you having the most issues with, right? So that's kind of how we got the, the top 20 list early on, right? Because we, we had a lot, of, a lot of work to do. I mean, we've, we've had hundreds and hundreds of hours of technicians going through schools and trying to find every piece of equipment. I mean, we're right now, I think I told you, 12 or 1,300 pieces of equipment in that list. Right? So we're, we're evaluating all of those pieces of equipment and the holistic approach is once we've got them all, then we've got to prioritize in each individual school, but overall as well. So we can't just, we can't just say, okay, Graham High School needs to go first and everything that needs to be done at Graham needs to go first. Because we know we've got chillers that are 30 and 35 years old that are literally on their last leg and they're not going to last very much longer. My problem is, and I'm not sure how to solve it, Sure. It is your your work is done on June thirtieth. I, I don't want to wait until June thirtieth. Understand. So, so I need I need to develop a plan okay. to to prioritize 
and, and abide by the holistic approach sure. in my mind. Mm -hmm. but, but I don't know how to do that without, without your full report. So I, I, don't, I don't know what action I need to take, I, I guess. Because I've got, I've got two different evaluations for a lot of different buildings. Right. I guess what I need is an integrated recommendation. And I guess working with Mr. Hook and ABSS, we, we need that very quickly. And I don't know how to get it. I, th I think we're, you know, the, the June date is also for, you know, schools and for county buildings. So obviously we're doing the schools first. So that's nothing to say that we can't finish up the reporting piece. Like we're working on the reporting piece for this now. So by the, the end of February, we'll have, you know, our recommend, recommendations on these 20, and we should have all of the site surveys completed by the end of this month as well. So we're not going to wait till June 20th. Is it going to be... February 28th, probably not. Could it be the middle of March or by the end of March have, have the school piece of this done? It's a pretty good chance we could do that. Let me add to Mr. Turner's question. We have to pass a budget, and as a practical matter, it's going to have to be by the uh, third Monday in June. So, And we can't really pin the tail on the donkey until we have all those numbers and priorities. So, uh, does that add to your question? Somebody asked uh, your question. Yeah. What, what is a what is a good date for you to be able to hit your dates? First, so uh, the first Monday in June. Before that, actually, yeah. it's tomorrow. Well, tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm hearing you right because I'm I'm pretty sure I am. When we build a brand new house, it goes from the floor up, and it's so easy to put all the duct work and everything in because it goes all together as planned. Correct. When you go into a school, no matter how old or how young it is, but if you've had additions, that's always going to be fun too. Correct. So what I want to know is the roof, the HVAC, it's, a, it's amazing there that you got to figure out how to get that entire school. I want every room to have the same temperature. You let teachers turn the heat on, one's 85, one's 29. I mean, it's just the way schools are when we add on and do stuff like that. That's probably where a lot of this extra expense is coming because we have to do this right or we are still band-aiding the process, correct? That is correct. Okay. Yeah, and we look at that. You, you, have, a lot of, you have a lot of systems in our world. They call them two-pipe systems, which basically means you've got a chiller that can run or you have a boiler that can run. They both use the same set of pipes. Mm -hmm. They can't run at the same time. So if you have a classroom that is full of kids in, in the winter, sometimes that, that classroom may need cooling. Sometimes, and then the one next to it may have half the, half the kids in it. It may need heat. We have a lot of, a lot of schools that can't do that. They, you know, the newer schools can, but the older schools cannot because of just the systems that were installed, designed and installed at the time, which was typical, you know, 25, 30 years ago. Well, I know when I've done junior achievement at Pleasant Grove, where the chickens are hatching down in the lower grades, it's really cozy. But up here, people got the windows open because it's so hot. Right. We don't live like that, you know? Right. <laughs> Mr. Turner, I did not mean to cut you all. Oh, was... no, that, that's all right. I'm, I'm still thinking. Uh, but, so, I did have a, but I did have thought myself into a question. So I think, <laughs> let me uh, just, I'm let right me behind you all. <laughs> so. I interrupt your thought process for a minute. And just to tell you that the goal here was to quickly um, as quickly as they could do it, give you an idea of the biggest problems and a sense of the scale and scope of those problems so that you could get your mind around the amounts of money we were talking about budgeting. Um, this is not an integrated let's go to work today list, but they have done all the work that they need to do to get to those lists. So they've done a ton of work getting up on roofs, checking all the HVACs. So I think if we have a dollar figure target, or we want to say to these guys, can you give me a list for the first 10 million, 20 million, whatever it is, they can do that relatively quickly. And that's just a sit down meeting where we talk these things through. They've got all the work built in to do that. Uh, we're just not quite there because we've been prioritizing on getting a, a bigger scope view. Well, and that was going to be the, the thrust of my question, which okay. is reversing the process, not talking about the need, but talking about money available and then deriving what can be done from that initially. Right. right. Um, Ron, your, your comments to me, um, I'm in a different place than I walked into this meeting because what I anticipated with the roofs is that we'd be able to say, these amount of roofs need immediate attention, those amount of roofs, you can wait two years, 
But you're, you're telling me that that's not the case. And that is different than what I anticipated hearing today. I did not put year two, three, four, five right. on those numbers. Right. These were year one. Yeah, so that's... And there are other roof sectors on uh, these schools yeah. that will be needed in year two, year three. So I'm in a different place. So i, I got to regroup on that. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what we do know... In terms of money that's available, there's there's unfunded bond mm -hmm. proceeds to the tune of $19 million that exist. Uh, I imagine that once we go to the bond market, that's probably more like $21 million. Um, Ms. York, do we know whether the Davenport model can support that amount of debt with uh, any additional revenue or not? We know from the last version of the Davenport model, which was August, that you could issue the nineteen and a half million, and the debt service would begin next fiscal year at approximately one point nine five million, and that there was enough money without new revenues to support that payment annually. So we do need to update the model because we've made some decisions that have impacted the capital reserve amounts on the ABSS side. So um, we could. If the board wants us to, we can get an update from Davenport and make sure both staff feels like we do have enough in there to support that with no new revenue. For the general I public, uh, the 2018 bond, $150 million to the school system, there's still money sitting out there unspent is what we're currently talking about. This would be the authorized but unissued remaining amounts, which is approximately $19.5 million. So I think we could move forward if we were to utilize those funds without needing a budget of July 1. You know, I don't think the deadline of, of an appropriation from general fund necessarily is contingent on this study. If we're going to move forward with the bond as your source of revenue, that can happen pretty quickly. Um, without holding up your budget process. And when you say quickly, that does not mean next week. It means we then have to uh, go through Davenport. We have to get the bond sale. A lot has to happen. Sure. So we're talking about what, four to six months. Yeah. Maybe, I'd say the quickest, maybe three months. We do have right. to go through the whole bond rating process again. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little difficult to get on their calendar, and then we get on the LGC calendar. So, yeah, probably... And springtime is very difficult in the municipal bond market because a lot of things are changing around that time. I mean, Susan could probably direct you about that better than I can. I'm not yeah. a bond trader. I just didn't want the general public to think that money's sitting... It is sitting there, but it uh, it takes a while to get to it. It does. These Mr. studies Warner. take a while, too. In the bonds, as I recall, we had money to... Upgrade windows and doors. Now, from what I'm hearing, if that haven't hasn't been done in some of these schools, then we may have a problem adding the heating and air con adding the HVAC systems, moving them and putting in better systems. If we don't have good windows and they're not sealed. We need to know which schools on these lists have had all the work done that they need to have done. They do, so that we, when we get this work done, we've got it all done. I mean, I, we can't keep going back and back and back <clears throat> and back every month with more requests for more money for stuff that needs to be done. We've got to figure it all out and then figure out how we're going to pay for it. As Mr. Carr is saying, we've asked repeatedly for maintenance schedules, for all kinds of things from the school system, and we've got to work closer together providing information. Um, we still are waiting on information on what's been completed from the 2018 bond referendum. Um, so we've just got to work a lot closer together. and. School said ABSS has got to provide us with a lot more information than we've had in the past. Anybody else? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Can, can I ask for just in terms of next steps? To, can we? Um, do you need? I mean, I think we're. I don't know if we're in agreement or not, but I think that the next step would be Davenport 
coming perhaps at our next meeting to to give us the information that you just spoke about with a potential vote to move forward with the, with those funds. Right. Yes, we can reach out to Davenport for an update off the model, have them come back, present that model to you, and then we could also discuss a project manager, whether or not we need that to help us oversee these projects and whether or not the bond funds would be an allowable use for that. I'm not sure they can come to the next meeting, but we'll get on their schedule to get them here as quickly as we can. Yeah, the general public needs to understand we provide the funds but the school system has to make it go. Uh, they have to provide the contracts, meet with the contractors, enter contracts, uh, and we don't even review their contracts to my dismay. Uh, we cannot have open-ended contracts like we've seen in the past. Uh, we need hard contracts. For example, there were several roofs that were replaced um, in 2018 and, and different years that were 20 year guaranteed roofs. Uh, I went through some of those contracts over the weekend. 20 year guaranteed roofs that now have to be replaced or repaired because part of those contracts were that the school system had to do regular maintenance, they had to do reporting on a regular basis as to the completion of those maintenance issues and contact the contractor that provided the roof or roofs uh, with information on a timely basis. And apparently, obviously, that was not done. So my guess is, and Rick, I'm not asking you to review all these contracts <laughs> because that's the school board's issue, but my guess is the warranties on those roofs have been just thrown away because the school system did not comply with the contractual obligations, such as maintenance and reporting. Uh, that's a whole other issue. But uh, but it, you know, but again, we have to pay. Did you have something? You no, I'm this. just going to have that. We were, we were part of those um, Come up here so they don't hear you, because it, it fades off into the last We, we were part of those schools, uh, the Design and Construction Administration in 2018. And you did the rules, in fact. A contractor did the roofs and we oversaw it, yes sir. Right. And um, none of those roofs are on this list. That None of those roofs are having any issues right now. Um, I believe what you're referring to is when you get a 20 year warranty on a new roof system, um, a knowledgeable individual, it be a roofing contractor or somebody with the school system knowledgeable about roof systems to go up there minimum twice a year to make sure that the drains are not clogged, the gutters are not clogged. And have, have they, in fact, complied with that portion of the contract? Have um, they reported to you I, I uh, couldn't, by my, my yearly? I couldn't, I couldn't answer that question for the school system. Um, I, my guess I, is I, not. Cause well, <laughs> <laughs> in their defense, only have four they, people. Yeah, they've had a number of operation uh, <laughs> directors over that period of time, just since 2018. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be surprised. I got a question. You, just made, you made a comment. You just said something, four people, there's only, only four people on their staff or your staff? From my understanding on their staff, they Thank only you. have four people to be able to look at 42 different schools because with that's, HVACs, that's, floors, roofs. That's more information that I've gotten, sir. Thank you. Whatever. I mean, that's my understanding. I'm not, I'm not the school board. <laughs> I don't work Heidi, for I them. I do have one request. Yes. You just brought it up. I want to make sure I say this before I forget. It's probably very imperative to reach out to Davenport today to tell them what uh, we're talking about the bonds because there are some things that they have to do to present to the, to the marketplace sure. before they can even come and let their executors e execute your order. So there's a lot of things that Davenport's going to have to do on their end before we could even get close because I'm really thinking uh, the way I've had this process before this particular process just to get us on to the bond market's agenda could take 30 to 45 days yep. from today. Yep. So you're looking at two months. Let me make an additional request. Uh, the top, top 20 HVAC and roof um, the slides that you're showing now were not in our packet for research um, in preparation for this meeting. 
So I'm asking, I guess, the county clerk, county manager, Mr. Baker, someone to make sure that in our minutes, those two slides are included in our minutes so the general public can have a copy of that. Sure, that's great. I, I do want to make one comment about these. Um, they are constantly changing lists. They're not going to totally change, but as they do more investigation, as they look into different schools, these lists are intended to change. So there'll be um, some fluidity throughout on these on the lists. And we can note that in our minutes. Yeah, we can add a date on these so that we know as of such and such date, this was the, the assessment. Mr. Chairman, I believe, I'm trying to remember if it was in our recent capital oversight meeting, that either well, Dr. Butler wasn't in the most recent. Might have been Mr. Hooks, or it was in, or possibly in a prior meeting. Either Dr. Butler or Mr. Hooks made a comment that they don't have an HVAC or a roofing specialist on staff right now. Am I correct? I'm not sure. I'd need to find that out too. Uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, one more comment is that um, I'm in a very different mindset this morning than I went when I walked in the door. Um, we've got to do what we can as quickly as we can to prevent moisture from getting in these buildings. Um, I, I, the 20, I think we can, my thought is what, what I, in order to increase that pace, if we had, do you think, uh, Brian, that ABSS would be able at our next meeting to present recommendations while working with these gentlemen on $22 million in immediate requests and projects that we could then turn into bond um, a bond request? Because I think in order to, to issue the bond, you have to have bids in hand, do you not? You do. Mm -hmm. So at our next meeting, if they could have $22 million, I don't know that the bond market will give us $22 million, but it's conceivable that they could. Um, as step one. Step two, as we complete this study, or even as we're going, uh, I, think, I think staff needs to work with ABSS staff to come up with a step two plan, which is what additional revenues do we need quickly to stop moisture intrusion in schools? Uh, I think that's step two, and I don't know how to get there, but I think we need a plan at our next meeting with some with some broad strokes on how we might do that. Well, pace is very important here, and I can't stress that enough. Yeah, so that's what this process is for, and I think that we can come up with in, in two weeks have uh, our plan for what the first $22 million would be spent on. Um, we can keep working over the course of the spring uh, to get the next steps and, and the top priorities. And also 19 million, because uh, we know we can get the 19 soon. Uh, the 22 would have to get into other areas of the bond. And so I would suggest, Mr. Turner, we look at 19 and 22. Okay. Uh, can I make a comment? Uh, Actually, you could do what you did the first time in the bond market, and you could actually talk to Davenport because he's going to have to re yeah. this things you'd have to release to the marketplace, and you get an idea of if there anybody willing to pay you some premium. Yeah. So bas yeah. basically, what you could do is get the twenty-two million bucks by issuing nineteen and a half. Right. Right. But that's something that Davenport's going to have to lead us because right. I, I don't know any bond traders right now <laughs> to call. <laughs> It's still a premium market from what we hear. Absolutely. So. The municipal market is very strong. Yep. Well, there was one other item that is left off of this list as well in our uh, capital oversight meeting. As I remember, the list had one item for the county. I don't see that on here. So number 11 is the uh, Alamance County Jail. That's the only county building oh, okay. that we Sorry, have current water intrusion on. So that's the only one that we asked them to examine in this first phase. And we can't do that under the school bond. We could not, no. So we could deduct that cost from the bond. And you two guys are going to be with us through this whole process. This is not your only meeting. Okay. <laughs> Put it on your calendar. <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And we thank you. All right, our next item, uh, item B, we have moved off the calendar. That's the uh, Event Center Feasibility Study.
And as you can see, that's a bunch of our docket. <laughs> okay. Uh, item 6C, uh, Mr. Atkins. That's the advertisement of delinquent 2023 taxes. That's correct. Thank you for having me here this morning. This is a routine item. I've been enjoying listening to all the uh, discussion this morning and just glad I didn't have to deal with any of it. <laughs> I'm an observer. Uh, what I have before you comes before you every year. So the law requires me to report to this board the amount of delinquent taxes that are liens on real property. And having reported that amount to the board, the board then uh, orders me to go and advertise that in a newspaper of general circulation. The good thing about that advertisement is that the cost is not borne by the taxpayers generally. So the individuals that have failed to pay receive a fee, and that fee covers the cost of the advertisement. So the persons that did not pay will pay their own advertisement. The rest of the citizens do not absorb that cost. Uh, we do estimate that $5 would be an appropriate amount for that fee. That's the same as we used last year. Now, as of January 25th, and that's when we put in the agenda item, the total amount of liens against real property for the current year was $6,347,584.35. I ran that again this morning just to see what's transpired. Uh, we've collected about half a million from that time. So we now stand at $5,861,000. $524.84. Obviously, we'll continue to bring that amount as we go. Now, what we tell our, our citizens, our taxpayers, is if you pay by the end of February, you will not be advertised. That is a goal for us, is to make sure that if anyone pays by the end of February, they don't have to worry about an advertisement in the newspaper. For that reason, uh, I would recommend doing the advertisement on or about March 14th. That gives us time for postmarks and for processing and for lead time to, to put it in the paper. So that would be the recommended time. And what I need this morning uh, is a motion just to authorize me to move forward with that, to apply a $5 fee, and to proceed with the advertisement, presumably March 14th. One question, please. Mm -hmm. um, I would appreciate it if you could recite for the meeting and for the benefit of uh, the press what the homestead exemption requirements are. I've heard a number of con concerns about the issue of some senior citizens not able to, that feel like the tax impact has been heavy. Sure. Let them know what opportunities they have. Can you just briefly describe the homestead mm -hmm. exemption, what's required, and what it amounts to? Right. So a person who is 65 years or older um, who is a homeowner, um, and they have a, a maximum income, Oh goodness! I need my cup of coffee. I'm going to say it's about 36 eight, but let me let me pull that. I'm having a, a pre-senior moment. It just went out of my mind. But that varies um, from year to year. It changes every year. Right. State and, statute. Yeah. That's right. Um, if they meet the income requirements, then they would be able to get in. It's ordinarily a 50 percent reduction on the uh, taxable value of the home. Sometimes it provides more than that, and it's not. Uh, there's no strings attached. And so you don't have to worry, well, if I get in the program, am I going to suddenly come up with some uh, large bill later? Uh, it just halves the, the taxes uh, generally. It applies to city and county. Uh, once you go in, you generally stay in the program. We do audit that program on an eight-year cycle. Uh, but generally, once you qualify, eight years later, you will still be qualified. Uh, so I think it's, it's excellent. Um, the deadline is June 1st to make application, but this board has graciously allowed us to extend that out to December 31st. So anybody that comes in any time during the calendar year, uh, we'll go ahead and get that taken care of for that year. So even if they realize after they've paid the bill, we can refund back the overage. We want to make sure that anyone who can get it um, does. Do we also have the ability to provide a payment plan if they single payment of the tax is not possible. Yes, absolutely. So we offer that with the um, bill as it goes out. We offer a, a five-step payment plan. Um, but then additionally to that, you know, someone will end up at this time of the year already delinquent. 
And so they said, well, what, what can I do? If they contact us, we'll work out a payment agreement. Um, we do that with the bank draft. We just set up a recurring payment, and that comes in and gets it satisfied. Definitely. And, and you uh, can also just, as I do, carry the payment in mm -hmm. over three months, four months, five mm -hmm. months, which makes it much, much easier for the taxpayers to pay that bill. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, I will note that, that the helpful staff here has uh, pointed out uh, the 23 income limit at 33.8 uh, based on the income earned in 2022. Um, obviously, at this time, we're in 2024, uh, so we would have to use 2023 income. 36. 36. Seven. Oh, goodness. I did 36.8. Oh, I wish I could claim it. I wish I pulled the eight from last year and the 36 from this year. That's time for coffee. Individual taxpayer or is that for a couple? Per household. And so if you do have a couple, it would use the combined uh, income. Yes, indeed. But it's an excellent program. Um, if anyone has questions, my recommendation is just to reach out, uh, give us a phone call, Absolutely. And, and we'd be glad to walk them through it. Sometimes, uh, folks, the, the form confuses me. What do I do? And I'm not a form filling out sort of person, so I, I recognize that. If they come in, we'll walk them through. Here's the steps. Here's what you need to do. It's really very easy to get in. Not everybody does online. Yes. Some people yes. just play solitaire on their laptop. I'm not saying I know those people, but <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that's really overwhelming for a lot of people. They haven't grown up mm -hmm. doing stuff like this. Yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. Yeah. I really appreciate with Alamance County generally mm -hmm. that if you reach out, you get a live human being and they help you. Uh, I, I know that's not the way um, increasingly with, with counties. I understand the, the need to automate things. Um, but if someone will reach out, they'll get a human being, and that person will help them through the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I'll make the motion that we um, authorize the tax administrator to have the $5 assessment uh, effective on or about March 14 of this year. Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next item is item 6D, uh, which is the added item and is basically the school RIF monies. Um, I'm not sure who's going to present on that, if anybody. Mr. Turner, do you want to take the lead? I'm happy to take that, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's, it's no surprise that our schools are in turmoil right now. Uh, the community at large is in turmoil right now over uh, a proposed reduction in force with the ABSS community. Um, I want a couple things to be clear. ABSS has not asked us for anything um, with respect to the RIF. Uh, we have asked for some specific information about the RIF uh, dollar amount and then a breakdown um, what what roles are affected how many how many folks are affected and what programs would be affected uh, I, I know we asked for that on Friday this meetings on Monday we haven't gotten the, the full amount um, ha haven't got the answers to that specific those specific questions um, the, part of what's causing stress here I think is, is the time that's involved in making a decision. I know ABSS has indicated that they would like to make a decision or at least consider this on February 13th. That's pretty quick. That's not a whole lot of time for anybody to react. And if that decision is made on February 13th, this is our last meeting before that meeting. Um, I would like to create a little bit of space, a little bit of time, time to delve into this problem, time to ask very pointed questions about how we got here, why we got here, are there any particular solutions, give everybody some time, both your, both ABSS's board and this board, to analyze this uh, and to figure out if there's, if there's a solution and if so what that might look like under circumstances where everybody can be a little calmer and have a little bit of, uh, of space. And so my proposal on how to do that without having specific information uh, and sort of taking a little bit of a shot in the dark, but, but to, uh, to recommend that, 
that this board give ABSS $250,000 that I think will buy at least six weeks to, to ask those questions. Uh, and then, um, so, so I, I, I'll make a motion and we can have further discussion about it, but it's that this board uh, provide ABSS with $250,000 out of the general fund to be used for ABSS with the desire that that money be used to forestall a reduction in force. Uh, and that if that money is not used for that purpose, uh, but is used for something else or not used at all, that this board would deem that $250,000 to be a, uh, an advance on next year's budget. I'll second. Um, comment, please. Let me mention this. Dr. Butler came in on June the 19th when we passed our annual budget and we gave him between eight and nine hundred thousand dollars. Eight sixty-seven. Correct. Eight, thank you. Eight sixty eight hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars extra beyond what the school board had asked for uh, to quote prevent the rift. So we gave him we've already funded this once. Uh, and I'm gonna vote for your motion, but I want the general public to know we have already funded this roof money. Uh, no, on June the 19th, we added to our recommended budget. Yes. And Dr. Butler said, we're going to have to riff yes. if well, you, said you don't. Riff, I'm sorry. And so, not roof, riff. Riff, right. Yeah. Um, so, we've already funded this on one occasion. Uh, with our annual budget, but uh, but I think this shows that we, the county commissioners, are going beyond what anybody probably should do with taxpayer money in order to support our teachers, our children, the school ABSS the administration, and the school board members, uh, because we've already funded this in its entirety, and now we're funding partially again. I'm sorry, Mr. Carter. Well, you took a little bit of my thunder. Um, as you stated, we, if you look back in last year, in May, at this last school board meeting in May, um, they had accepted our, candidate, our manager, county manager's recommended budget and told us that was going to work. They didn't need any more money. I'm a, I believe it was their audit that informed them that they'd overspent on their budget over $2 million. They didn't know that. Their fund balance was down further than they thought it was. That's kind of like strike one. Then in June, once they found out they'd overspent on their audit and didn't have the fund balance, they thought, I don't even understand how you get to the end of an operating year and don't know you're $2 million short. Then, in June, on June the 19th, as Mr. Paisley just pointed out, they came to us and Dr. Butler assured us that the $867,000 would present a reduction in force. We had, in order to get that $867,000, we were really close. We weren't at Revenue neutral, but we were very close to revenue neutral. But in order to provide that $867,000, we had to raise the tax rate higher than we wanted to. Then, subsequent to that, we learned that their chief financial officer had wired $320,000 to a bogus account. Now, that money's been recovered through insurance. But that's strike one, strike two, strike three. Then we get to December and a bad rainstorm. And we have, they don't appear to know at ABSS that they have the funds you've just seen demonstrated sitting in accounts available to be used for roof repair and have had it for more than two years. Now, I understand that they, the accusation from ABSS is that DPI takes about 14 months to approve work. That's bizarre. I mean, at the state level, we need to talk to our state delegation and find out why. I mean, you don't need to take 14 months when you've got a problem 
to get approval on getting it fixed from the state. But that's strike four. Then strike five, I mean, we're way past strikeout, is this approach now we find out we still don't have enough money. How much money are they out of balance in their budget? We don't even know. We've asked. We've asked for last week when we started hearing about this. We asked. How much money do you need? We've had an estimate, but we don't know for sure. They haven't told us. Um, and to kind of top it all off, their policy says that they're not supposed to notify their employees of a possible layoff unless it's been approved by the board. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. And they've gone out and notified employees that they might get cut. Guys? I'm just struggling. I'm really struggling with management at ABSS. And I think the whole community probably is. Um, this board values education. My wife and Mr. Paisley's wife, so both sitting here with us today, both are retired school teachers. Ms. Paisley taught for 42 years in Alamance County. My wife has retired after 27 years, last eight in Alamance County. We value education. Our kids were too old to be in the school system. If they were still in school when we came here, we'd have had a problem. But they would have been in public schools. Um, and we've got problems there, too, as we all know. The number of schools failing in Alamance County. We've got a management problem over at ABSS, and somebody needs to take a look at it. I intend to vote for this as well. But somebody needs to... That's the responsibility. This board, if we had those kind of problems in the county, would be dealing with it. That's the responsibility of the ABSS school board. It's not to be a cheerleading board for the ABSS management. And I believe that there are members of the school board that aren't in a more, trying to play the role of cheerleader. But the whole board needs to take on the responsibility of managing the funds. And if you don't have the right people in place, you need to take a serious look at who does need to be there. Mr. Turner, any comments? I, I don't disagree with, with some comments that have already been made. I, I just, I'm trying to create a little bit of time, a little bit of space, ask the right questions, come up with some solutions if they're available, and I think this does that. As I said, Mr. I intend to vote for the motion. Ms. Thompson. I any? seconded it, so I'm good. Okay. Mr. Lashley. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just want to reiterate what Mr. Um, Carter has said because he told you the right thing. And I'm sitting in that seat in those shoes right now because I'm just going to say that I worked my tail off for that last budget. Backside. That too. <laughs> I put more time into that budget than I did my own personal finances and my family. I started working on that budget the day after Christmas last year. And when I walked into the room on June 19th, like Mr. Carter, I was kicking myself because I had tried everything in my toolbox to get it down to revenue neutral, and I missed it by $450,000 on a $215 million budget. Now, I'm an options trader. As an options trader, I got to be precise as well as my price and my time have to be dead on. So this was a kick in the pants for me because when I walked in that room that night, I knew my number was 450 and I hated that mm -hmm. number. I did too. But then as always, when the school system has asked this board for anything, I have been more than willing to help. As a matter of fact, when I first became a county commissioner, I took it upon myself to walk over and talk to the finance director of ABSS to see where we could have the same numbers because I realized over my experience in business that I have to be on the same page 
with my partners if I intend to be arrive at the same place that the partners want to arrive at. Now, after the superintendent came in and asked us for this money, banging on my calculator to see if what it's going to do with my rate. And we walked in here with a 43 cent rate, two tenths away from revenue neutral, and to do that for the school system and every single time, to, and I told this to, doc, uh, to Dr. Butler, that I have relented a lot of things that he's asked me for. I came in saying no, listened to his request, listened to his ask, and said, you know something, it seems reasonable, let's give it to him. And I did it that night too, against my better judgment. And now, fast forward eight months. Now I have to look at myself in the mirror and said that I got duped. Someone told me that if I did this, that would happen. Well, guess what? I did this, and that didn't happen. And now look at today. Mr. Carter, I mean, excuse me, Mr. Turner, I want to thank you for thinking outside the box here. This, was a, this is a decent idea you have. I think you have put some thought into this, and you have an idea when it would go. And you have my vote, too, based on the one thing that you said about this money is, if it does not use properly, comes off the top of next year's budget. Now, with all that being said, how do we, I'm, I'm just going to say this, I see two school, school board members up here today, and I, Mr. Engel came and talked to us. Uh, gentlemen, this is going to give you an opportunity to ask the hard questions of your superintendent. Show the community of Alamance County that we are serious about these problems, and we want to adjust, 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 Address it head on. So this is going to give you time, thanks to Commissioner Turner, to ask those hard questions next week. I also know, know next week that the school system and the uh, Board of Commissioners have a uh, meeting Thursday with the state delegation. School board members, this is your opportunity to show the community we're going to face this head on and we're going to ask some hard questions. And some of those questions are not going to be comfortable, but they have to be asked. And I'm certain that this is a great way to go on that path that Mr. Engel was talking about, because we all want as least amount of problems as we can do. So that's all I wanted to say, and I apologize for going so long, but I've been sitting here for the last half hour thinking about all the things I want to say, and I think I got them all out. <laughs> and, uh, Commissioner Turner, I just want to thank you for thinking outside the box. And uh, school board members, Engel and Bowden, are both here. Uh, we've been asked to attend the meeting this coming Thursday at 2.30 uh, at your premises, but we have not been asked to be a participant. Uh, I'm asking that we be um, a participant with the legislature as opposed to in the audience. Uh, I've telephoned and asked... Uh, Mr. Hingle, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You, you, are, you, will, you will be at the table. There's, there's an email out there. Senator Gailey, this was a meeting that she had requested, and uh, she sent an email out uh, that it is for, for the commissioners, the local delegation, and the school board. We so, just got that this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have thank not you. looked at my yes, email. Sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so it will be a basically commissioner, legislature, and... ABSS meeting. Yes, sir. That's correct. Thank you. Uh, I'm, the only thing I'm going to add to that before we vote, um, I'm asking constantly. We had meetings once a month prior to COVID, and it was terminated with COVID, of the superintendent, the county manager, and the two chairs. That's been terminated. I've asked um, more than once to resume those meetings if we don't communicate, we don't have the information and we cannot resolve these matters without, and I'm and more emphatically insisting that instead of going to the press, as you have repeatedly, and showing leaking roofs which have been fully funded year after year, that you come to us, the county commissioners, and say, look, guys, we have a problem. But repeatedly, you're doing the what I call propaganda or grandstanding, and you go to the press first, blaming county commissioners, 
for not funding for, quote, decades, and which is factually just not correct. So I'm asking that we, one, talk to each other, two, resolve these meetings outside the press, I'm not trying to keep the press out, but I'm saying we can't, if you go to the press first and complain and blame, it's not going to get resolved. We've got to change that. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, one other comment. It's been alluded to as well regarding the uh, um, mold intrusion that the remediation had an impact on operations for ABSS. Now, folks, you, in government, you can't mix capital funds with operational funds. So there is no way, and, 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 and in a subsequent release, uh, one of the, what, both members of our local press are here. Uh, there was an article in one of their papers this week, I won't name which one, that implied that because of the mold and remediation, there was a negative impact on the operational expense budget for ABSS. Those two don't mix. You can't spend operational funds on capital needs, and you can't spend capital funds on operational needs. So the operations budget is independent of the mold expense. We used funds that were available in the capital funding for ABSS to take care of the mold. Operationally, as I pointed out earlier, it's, I don't know how much money they're down but we know that they're down possibly another eight or nine hundred thousand dollars in their budget. So they needed eight hundred thousand and eight hundred and sixty seven thousand before we approved our final budget that they didn't know about when they approved their budget. And now they need a possible another eight hundred thousand dollars. And from what I understand from some sources, a number of the positions they're looking at possibly have been hired subsequent to the approval of their last budget. So they've been adding people when they didn't know they didn't have the money to pay for it. That's kind of strike six. That's all I'm going to say. Any other comments? Call for a vote. Mm -hmm. All right. All in. Yes, ma'am. I would just like to clarify where you'd like to take the funds from, the 250000 He said general fund. General fund, yeah. So it would be fund, the appropriated fund, fund balance. balance. Appropriate balance. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You want to restate your motion? You don't need to. Don't do it. No, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> All in favor of the motions signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed is unanimous. Board members, school board members, there is a time allotted to this money. And thank you for attending. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. County Attorney's Report. Nothing for me today, board. Glad to be back. That's the best report so far. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, County Manager. Same. No further report. But the second best. <laughs> County Commissioner's comments. We probably have already used them, but yep. Ms. Thompson, I'll start with you. Okay, I, I'm gonna just read a statement that's kind of coming from a spectator's view. Um, Steve was with me when he heard this yesterday. Beg your pardon? I said, you heard this with me at the same time yesterday, and it's, uh, it's about leadership. And I got a picture of a bunch of geese. Oh yeah. And this is very important, <laughs> how we can relate to geese. They're not so annoying. My pastor did this. They always fly in a formation. And um, I heard the best story yesterday that just kind of hit the nail on the head for where we are right now in the situation that we're all facing with ABSS. We seem to have gotten into a personal tug of war and the ones suffering are many times the kids and the ones that teach them. I never want to see successful programs and the ones teaching them be removed from the system. I also know that the tremendous importance of student services, our nurses, our social workers, our counselors, etc. I know the ESSER money was able to really focus on mental health positions also in cleaner environments. I find it interesting that life before COVID, that the air quality in schools was no big deal. We still had emergency situations in school prior, depression with some kids possibly thinking suicide, 
problems with drugs, disciplinary issues, teen pregnancies, STDs, absenteeism, dangerous homes, gang recruitment, and on and on. It never ceased to amaze me how the air quality became so important due to COVID when many school systems across the state and nation had mold for who knows how long. Commissioner Carter and I heard this amazing story yesterday about geese and why they fly in formation. Why do they do this and what can we learn about leadership from it? Each bird flies slightly above the bird in front of them, reducing the wind resistance. The geese take turns being the leader, falling back when they get tired. This means they can fly for a long time before they need to rest. The V formation makes it easier to keep track of every bird in the group. Flying in formation helps each member to communicate and coordinate with the group more effectively. Just as the birds fly together to create less resistance, if as a leader we can inspire and motivate others to share a common direction and work cohesively toward that goal, we will get there much quicker and with better outcomes. When geese are flying together, and if a geese gets tired or tries to resist the will of the group, it feels the drag of the other birds pulling it back into formation. In our workplace, we need to stay close to those in the same goals and aspirations as they are heading where we want to go. Geese are distributed leadership models. When the leading goose gets tired, it swaps places with another member of the team so that it can support from behind and recharge itself. This means this reminds us that a distributed leadership model is the most effective in building a strong team. Each person bringing their own valuable skills and ideas, each leading when they are the best person to do so. Geese honk to encourage those in front to keep up their speed. We should ensure that we speak out to encourage others to be their best. This supportive environment will allow other team members to flourish and feel valued. Ensure that your honking isn't negative and accusatory as this will result in a demotivated team that lacks purpose. And finally, when a geese gets sick, when a goose gets sick rather, or falls behind, two other geese break away from the flock and stay with it, either until it dies or it is strong enough to rejoin the group. When members of our team are struggling, we need to stand by them and support them until they can perform at their best again. Good leadership means being there for people when the chips are down not just when they are helping us be successful. So you see, we have to support the different agencies in this county when it hits the fan. Alamance County is one big team, and beating down someone when they are already at the bottom hurts everybody. And if we keep blaming, we will never go anywhere except where we already are. I know it's the time to pounce, but we gotta really take a step back and look at that. I'm not neglecting accountability, that's big in my life as well. I'm asking for all of us to just stop and get at the same table and work together as though our very life depends on it. Because for children, it does. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Lashley. Oh, I have nothing. I've spoken up today. Mr. Turner. Nothing, thank you. Mr. Carter. I have nothing else. And I agree. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Vote so moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 
1-800-274-27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.